I guess um, this video is called Transformations of Functions, section 1.7 in your book. So in class today we talked about basic parent functions. So f of x equals x or f of x equals x squared. And these are just the basic functions. And this video is about how you can transform those functions into other functions. And similarly, therefore, you'll be able to see other functions and see how they are derived from these parent functions, okay? And our, uh, our boy Scotty's fishing right now. Okay, so the first transformation is called a shift. Say we start with f of x equals x squared. Well, I have that graph right here. And we can shift that graph horizontally, so left or right, or vertically, up or down. To shift the graph horizontally, you're going to take the x and add or subtract a constant to it. So if you subtract 2 in this example, it's going to shift it to the right. And I remember we were talking about this. It sounds kind of backwards, but you just got to remember that minus 2 will shift it to the right. Minus a number will shift it to the right, and plus a number will shift it to the left. Okay? To so shift it vertically, you're going to add or subtract something to the whole function. So you just have this function, and you're going to add or subtract something to it. And so we have x squared plus 2, and that's just up 2. And think about it. For here, if we plug in 0, we're going to get 0 squared, which is 0. So we're going to have 0 comma 0. Here, we're going to get 0 squared, which is 0, plus 2. So it's going to be 0 comma 2. And that happens with every point. Every point gets the same value, but you add 2 to it. Okay? So here's another example. Um, f of x equals x cubed. And that is in blue, and I understand my drawing is not so great, but you, you get the gist here. So in red, we have it shifted to the right 3, because we subtracted 3. And in green, we have it vertically shifted down 3. Took the whole thing and subtracted 3. Okay. Alright, our next refle our next transformation is a reflection. Alright, and... Hold on. Yeah, don't show those messages again. Okay. So, we can either reflect a graph about the x-axis or the y-axis. And in, in order to flip a graph across the x-axis, we're going to take the whole thing and put a negative in front of it. And think about that, you know. So, if, a value, we have, if we have a value of 2, it's going to become negative 2. And it'll flip it across the x-axis. But to reflect the graph around the y-axis, we only put a negative sign right on the x. So we pair it up with the x. Okay? And we're going to check out an example here. Alright. So, here's an example. If we have f of x equals square root of x, which is in black here, we can shift that across the x-axis. So we got the x-axis here. And red is its shift across the x-axis. And all we did was put a negative sign on the outside of the whole function. So now when you plug in 4, normally when you plug in 4, well, it's actually right here, 1, 2, 3, 4, you're going to get 2, but instead we're going to get negative 2. So we plug in 4, we're going to get 2, we're going to take negative, so it's negative 2, and that'll flip it across the x-axis. Here, in green, we have it flipped across the y-axis, because like I said, you put a negative sign just with the x. Okay? And so instead of, you know, normally we plug in 4, uh, it's going to take negative 4, so this changes the domain. Uh, you can't plug in any positive numbers, right? Because it'll become a negative number, and you can't take the square root of a negative number. Okay? In blue, we have a shift. So we have plus 3. So that shifts at left 3, right? But we also have it reflected across the x-axis because we have a negative sign across uh, on the outside of the whole thing. Okay? So that's kind of a little combination there. Combination transformation. Okay. And the last transformation is called a non-rigid transformation. And basically what they mean by this, if you read this in the book, it means, you know, the other transformations we did, the graph never really changes its shape. So right here, it's the same graph, but it's just rotated and flipped and moved. So on these, on these shifts, same thing. It's the same graph, even though I just drew it really bad. It's really the same graph that's just moved up or down or left or right. Okay? But for non-rigid transformations, we're going to take our function and we're going to basically multiply the x by a constant. Okay, so here we have f x equals x, and it's just a straight, regular line. Okay, and that's one of our parent, parent functions right there. If we multiply it by 3, it's going to make the graph steeper. 
or kind of shrink it. You'll see that it shrinks it because now when we plug in here, when we plugged in one for x, f of x will equal one, so we get one comma one. Here, when you plug in one, you're going to get three, so it's going to become steeper. Every value is going to go higher, so that's what happens there. Okay, so when you plug in a number greater than one, basically, it's going to make a line steeper and make functions shrink. Okay, but if you take a number less than one, so we have one thirds here, it's kind of going to flatten the line out because now you plug in one, it's just going to be one third. When you plug in three, instead of it being f of x equals three, it's going to be just one. So it gets everything gets lower. The y and the y outputs, the outputs of y or f of x, are going to be smaller values. They're going to be one third of what they used to be, to be exact. Okay. So here's another example. So what I was saying about shrinking is f of x equals x squared is in red, okay? When you take a number less than one, so like one half, it's going to kind of stretch it out. Because now, okay, so we put in one for, say we put in two for this value, we get four, right? So two, four. Now, we put in two, we get four, and then we take one half of it. So it's really just going to get two. So everything's getting less, so it's, got, it's not rising as fast. All right, if I had, if I had done, uh, you know, f of x, equals 3 times x squared it would have made it really steep, it would have made it some, like something like this because the output's 3 times as much as it used to be, so at, even at 1 it's kind of already be at 3, it's much bigger right there okay, and at 2 it's, it's huge, it's like 12, right okay, so those are your non-rigid transformations and that's it, that's it for tonight, so um Make sure you understand that. We're going to be uh, working on this stuff tomorrow in groups. And uh, here are your questions. Oh, look at this. Got a really nice thing. Autobots Autobots Autobots